Hi and welcome back to my channel. I love to have you back here. If you happen to be new, I'm Stephanie and I'm a language enthusiast that currently speaks eight languages and I use my channel Polyglot Secrets to give tips and tricks about how to learn languages and I've started this new series of reaction videos where I react to popular talks on language learning and in today's video I'm going to react to how to learn any language in six months by Chris Lonsdale and it's another TEDx talk and I thought it had a very catchy title and it does promise quite a lot so let's go over it together and see what it's about and I'll share my two cents about it. So I had this question in mind, how do you learn faster? And this began when I was very, very young. When I was 11 years old, I wrote a letter to researchers in the Soviet Union asking about hypnopedia. This is sleep learning, where you get a tape recorder, you put it beside your bed, and it turns on in the middle of the night when you're sleeping, and you're supposed to be learning from this. Uh, good idea, unfortunately it doesn't work. Yeah, that's a great place to stop right there because I know he's still not talking about language learning, etc. But this is super prevalent in the language learning community. You're going to see a bunch of videos on YouTube that say learning your sleep. And as um, Chris is also saying that that is so not true and it's just not doable. Don't we all wish it was, but no. In 1981, I took myself to China and I decided that I was going to be native level in Chinese inside two years. Now, you need to understand that in 1981, everybody thought Chinese was really, really difficult and that a Westerner could study for 10 years or more and never really get very good at it. And I also went in with a different idea, which was taking all of the conclusions from psychological research up to that point and applying them to the learning process. What was really cool was that in six months I was fluent in, in Mandarin Chinese. So I still think a lot of people would say that Chinese is a difficult language. I think a lot of people still think that. And I've never studied it myself, so of course I cannot comment, but um, difficulty is extremely subjective. So that is something that I do want to point out. And I've actually made a video on that, like on how subjective difficulty is. So it's going to pop up on the screen, check it out, because I do believe that difficulty is is super person dependent. But um, what he's saying here that he wanted to be native-like and then he's saying that he was fluent in six months. So I think that those are two very different things. And so I think that the fact that he had this goal of being native-like in two years, um, that could happen. Again, if you're passionate enough about the language that makes it much easier, so it could happen. But the thing is with time, it's super difficult to tell how long it takes to learn the language. Of course, too many factors at play, but uh, bottom line is there's a huge difference between being fluent and being native-like. Um, being native-like just requires a much deeper command of the language and actually quite a lot of cultural understanding. And you don't necessarily need to have that as a goal. You don't even have to have fluency as a goal, but fluency is more achievable than being native-like and it's, there's many, many types of fluency. But that's a very thorny question. Anyways, what I wanted to point out is that um, when you hear somebody becoming fluent in a language in X number of months, it doesn't equate to being native-like, at least not in my opinion. The question is, how do you do that? Well, it's actually really easy. You look around for people who can already do it, you look for situations where it's already working and then you identify the principles and apply them. It's called modeling. Like that's a lot of the times advice that's given to us, not just in language learning, but also, um, for example, a lot of the entrepreneur advice out there is, you know, find somebody who's done it and absorb as much information and experience from them as possible. And I think that that's great. And I think that that's a really good way to learn to when you don't know how to do something to already see somebody who's done it and how they've done it and talk to that person and figure out how they've done it. And that's why I love YouTube as a platform so much because it allows you to learn from others. And that's why I also love polyglot channels in general, because, you know, there's so much we can learn from each other and that's a great message to share. So, so far, um, yeah, I'm really enjoying this TED talk. And my conclusion, my observation from this is that any adult can learn a second language to fluency inside six months. Now, when I say this, most people think I'm crazy. This is not possible. So let me remind everybody of the history of human progress. It's all about expanding our limits. In 1950, everybody believed that running one mile in four minutes was impossible. And then Roger Bannister did it in 1956, and from there it's got shorter and shorter. A hundred years ago, 
Everybody believed that heavy stuff doesn't fly, except it does, and we all know this. Okay, yes, that is true. There's, we are always about pushing limits, we're always about expanding, learning new things, but there's a limit. No matter how much you expand your limits, it cannot go on forever. We cannot go on shrinking and shrinking and shrinking the time it takes to learn a language forever by becoming more efficient and eventually, what, learning a language in a week? It's that's not the case and i really here's something that i don't like that anybody can do it in six months i really like the message that anybody can do it of course is the human condition we all have the ability to learn a language that's a given otherwise we wouldn't be able to speak our native languages but to go ahead and say that anybody can learn a new language in six months is i think inaccurate because it depends on quite a few factors your personal situation in life. Like there's so many factors that can influence you from past experiences with language learning to just how you feel psychologically in that moment, because that also influences learning to how far removed is that language from a language you speak? Because trust me, a Spanish speaker can pick up Portuguese really quickly. They cannot do the same with Chinese. It's just too different of a language. Um, and then also, of course, how much you care about that country's culture can also influence you quite a bit because if you're super passionate about something, obviously you're going to learn faster. So there's way too many um, factors there. And I think that having a limit like six months in your head is unrealistic and putting a number is not, not a good idea. Yeah, I'm all about the message to see what you can do, push your limits, expand, but there's you know, putting a number can, and when it doesn't happen as quickly because you picked a tougher language and that's not like your own. And if you have that number of six months and you're not fluent by then, it can be very discouraging. And that's a dangerous way to threat. So just keep in mind, yes, anybody can learn a language and it's a journey. It takes however long it takes. Don't rush it. So I'm going to dispel two myths. The first is that you need talent. Let me tell you about Zoe. Zoe came from Australia, went to Holland, was trying to learn Dutch, struggling extremely, extremely, a great deal. And finally, you know, people were saying, you're completely useless, you, you, you're, you're, you're not talented, give up, you're a waste of time. And she was very, very depressed. And then she came across these five principles. She moved to Brazil and she applied them. And in six months, she was fluent in Portuguese. So talent doesn't matter. People also think, that immersion in a new country is the way to learn a language. But look around Hong Kong. Look at all the Westerners who've been here for 10 years who don't speak a word of Chinese. Yeah, you know, he's right. It's not about talent because, as I mentioned, everybody can do it. Of course, some people have more talent than others, but that's the case with everything in life, every single thing. Some of us are faster. Some of us are better at math. Others are better at art. Others are better at languages, it, whatever. Um, so it's not about the talent. It's about the fact that anybody can do it. Some people can perhaps do it quicker and better and hold on to more languages, but it's not about being the best. It's about picking up those principles as he's saying. And then also about immersion. That's exactly, yeah, I actually have friends that have lived in Germany for years and still don't speak the language. So it's, yeah, he's all right. There's so many people all over the world that are immigrants and they didn't learn the language or they didn't learn it to the level that they would have liked to. So that's, um, yeah, hit the nail on the head. And also goes the other way around. You don't need to live in the country to learn the language of fluency. Come with me on a journey through a forest. You go on a walk through a forest and you see something like this. Little marks on a tree. Maybe you pay attention, maybe you don't. You go another 50 meters and you see this. You should be paying attention. Another 50 meters, if you haven't been paying attention, you see this. And at this point, you're paying attention. And you've just learned that this is important, it's relevant because it means this. And anything that is related, any information related to your survival is stuff that you're gonna pay attention to and therefore you're gonna remember it. If it's related to your own personal goals, then you're going to pay attention to it. It's relevant. You're going to remember it. So the first rule, first principle for learning a language is focus on language content that is relevant to you, which brings us to tools. We master tools by using tools, and we learn tools the fastest when they're relevant to us. I had a colleague many years ago who went to night school, Tuesday night, Thursday night, two hours each time, practicing at home. She spent nine months and she did not learn to type Chinese. And one night we had a crisis. We had 48 hours to deliver a training manual in Chinese. 
and she got the job. And I can guarantee you in 48 hours, she learned to type Chinese. So I'm going to stop here and let's discuss what we saw. Um, so he is super right about using content that's relevant to you. If you don't feel personal connection, if you don't feel relevance, then of course it's not going to happen. That's why I love comprehensible input so much, because when it comes to comprehensible input, you already kind of choose stuff that you care about because you want to understand the message. And so learning about our own passions is a big deal. And that's why also at schools, a lot of times we're given stuff that we don't necessarily care about. And that's why language learning is so difficult. It's cool because we all have different interests. Some of us might care about reading certain things, others about other things, or about listening to certain things, etc. So it's very important to use materials that you actually like and that are relevant to your situation. If something's not relevant, if you're never going to use it, you're just not going to be as motivated. And the example with that woman that learned to type Chinese so quickly in 48 hours, as he says, is, is spot on because a lot of the times you can drag it around for years. She dragged around the Chinese characters for months, just like many of us drag around languages for years at school and never pick it up. So the second that it became relevant to her, that's when it clicked. And that is a great message to share. So the second principle for learning a language is to use your language as a tool to communicate right from day one, as a kid does. When I first arrived in China, I didn't speak a word of Chinese. And on my second week, I got to take a train ride overnight. I spent eight hours sitting in the dining car talking to one of the guards on the train. He took an interest in me for some reason. And we just chatted all night in Chinese and he was drawing pictures and making movements with his hands and facial expressions and piece by piece by piece I understood more and more. So there's a lot of like speak from day one advice out there. I don't necessarily think that you need to use your language as a tool to communicate and you know that that's something you should do in language learning. That is not something that you should do right at the beginning unless you feel like it. There's polyglots that learn that way but most of them that I know actually don't learn that way. Not to say that there's anything wrong with learning that way. There's so many ways of learning. I'm saying it shouldn't be a rule. Um, so you can speak from day one if you want to. If you know this is your goal, you really want to communicate right away, this is what motivates you, do it. But if you feel more comfortable with getting input first, understanding first, making sure that you're ready to communicate. So if that makes you feel more confident, then that's what you should do. I personally don't like to speak from the ON. I like to have a lot of input first. So I'm not saying whether you should or should not speak from day one, but it's not a rule. Don't feel like you have to speak from day one. So I'd actually disagree on that. Which brings us to the third principle. When you first understand the message, then you will acquire the language unconsciously. And this is really, really well documented now. It's something called comprehensible input. There's 20 or 30 years of research on this. Stephen Krashen, a leader in the field, has published all sorts of these different studies. And this is just from one of them. The, the purple bars show the scores on different tests for language. The green and the, the purple people were people who had learned by grammar and formal study. The green ones are the ones who learned by comprehensible input. So comprehension works. Comprehension is key. And language learning is not about accumulating lots of knowledge. In many, many ways, it's about physiological training. Yeah, yeah, he's so right. You know how I feel about comprehensible input. If you've watched my other videos, you know that that's what I'm all about. He's exactly right. If you understand the message, then you're going to pick up the language subconsciously. He's exactly right. It has nothing, nothing to do with acquiring a set of facts, a set of knowledge, kind of like it does in some other disciplines. No, it's all about training. He said physiological training. That actually makes sense because it is about, it's a skill. Language learning is a skill. It is not to pick up like a certain a number of words and to memorize a certain number of grammar rules and that is spot on. So you need to treat it as a skill, approach it as a skill, approach it like you would approach riding a bike. You know, you don't read about how the bike works all day long. You kind of get on it and that's how it happens. You know, that's how you learn to write. So it's the same thing. You don't read about the language that is study grammar and, you know, uh, memorize words all day long, but you kind of, you get exposed to it every day. That's how you learn. We have filters in our brain that filter in the sounds 
that we are familiar with and they filter out the sounds of languages that we're not. And if you can't hear it, you won't understand it. If you can't understand it, you're not going to learn it. So you actually have to be able to hear these sounds. And you, there are ways to do that, but it's physiological training. Speaking takes muscle. You've got 43 muscles in your face. You have to coordinate those in a way that you make sounds that other people will understand. If you've ever done a new sport for a couple of days and you know how your body feels, hurts, if your face is hurting, you're doing it right. Again, he's right. Yeah, because when it comes to listening, um, it's totally, you gotta get attuned to it. I had the same thing happen with Portuguese, European Portuguese, the first time I heard it. I didn't understand anything, although when I read it, I would understand it because I was I already spoke Spanish. So, but I just wasn't accustomed to the sounds of European Portuguese. It's super close, it's difficult, more difficult pronunciation than Brazilian Portuguese. So it was difficult for me, my ear wasn't accustomed. I never studied Portuguese at that point, so I thought it's difficult because simply because I hadn't gotten accustomed to the language. And same with pronunciation, anybody who studied a language or two can tell you Sometimes if it's a language that is very phonetically different from your own, it can take you a while to learn to move your mouth that way to make those sounds. And when your face hurts, you're doing it right. I mean, yeah, kind of, yeah, it's, it's uncomfortable in the beginning for sure. And the final principle is state, psychophysiological state. If you're sad, angry, worried, upset, you're not going to learn, period. If you're happy, relaxed, in an alpha brain state, curious, you're going to learn really quickly. And very specifically, you need to be tolerant of ambiguity. If you're one of those people who needs to understand 100% every word you're hearing, you will go nuts because you'll be incredibly upset all the time because you're not perfect. He's so right. Yeah, I, I did touch a little bit on that, but truly your state, your psychological state really matters. First of all, it really matters that you believe you can do it. That's a big deal. If you've already learned another language, that comes more easily. If you've never learned a second language, that doesn't come as easily, but it can be done and you should work on that, on that psychological state. And then, yeah, when you really don't feel like it, don't force yourself to learn, don't learn from this negative place. It's not just about language learning, actually, you know, it's well documented how our psychological state affects learning. So of course, it's not gonna happen if you hate it. So whatever methods you're using, if it makes you feel bad, if you don't like it, drop that method, it's just not worth it. Only use methods that you like, because that that's what takes you to this positive state using methods that you like. Otherwise, if you're not enjoying the process, it's just not gonna happen. Learning when you don't like something is super difficult. Don't we all know that? What are the seven actions that you take? Number one, listen a lot. I call it brain soaking. You put yourself in a context where you're hearing tons and tons and tons of the language, and it doesn't matter if you understand it or not. Oh well, yeah, I agree, but there's the thing that you should soak your brain in this, absolutely, but then you should also it, it's not that it doesn't matter if you understand. You should try to understand. And if you get nothing, maybe pick something easier because you should be understanding at least part of it. You don't have to understand everything, but if you don't understand anything, it's just mumbo jumbo. So you need to make an effort to tune in to what you're listening so it's not just empty, empty activity and empty exercise. The second action is you get the meaning first, even before you get the words. And you go, well, how do I do that? I don't know the words. Well, you understand what these different postures mean. Human communication is body language in many, many ways. So much body language. From body language, you can understand a lot of communication. Therefore, you're understanding, you're acquiring through comprehensible input. That's very true. Don't focus on the individual words. Focus on the overall context and meaning. That is definitely all about comprehensible input, learning through context, etc. You can use body language if you are communicating with somebody live or even if you're watching a movie in another language, you know, a lot of those visual cues are there. If you're reading a book or listening to a podcast, you know, focus on the overall meaning, focus on the overall sentence meaning, not whether you got each and every word, because a lot of times you can figure out the meaning from context, even if you don't understand 100%. So focus on that, on getting the overall story. And yeah, if you get access to body language be by speaking to people or watching movies, yeah, um, pay attention to the body language. That's a good tip. The third action, start mixing. You probably have never thought of this, but if you've got 10 verbs, 10 nouns, and 10 adjectives, you can say 1,000 different things. 
So start mixing, get creative, have fun with it. It doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to work. And you, when you're doing this, you focus on the core. What does that mean? Well, with every language, there's high-frequency content. In English, 1,000 words covers 85% of anything you're ever going to say in daily communication. 3,000 words gives you 98% of anything you're going to say in daily conversation. You've got 3,000 words, you're speaking the language. The rest is, is icing on the cake. Yeah, he's right. Unless you need like very specific vocabulary for very specific things, um, say you're going to a neuroscience conference, chances are you need just the most frequent words in the language and you should focus on more everyday content, of course. Very important to know why you're learning a language. Kind of goes back to something he said before, that it is very important for things to be relevant to you. So it's going to be different if you just want to travel to a country. It's going to be different if you want to do business in that country. And so you should focus on content that that's relevant to you so that you can pick up the relevant vocabulary because chances are you don't need all the words in the dictionary. Totally right. So you get yourself a language parent who's somebody interested in you as a person who will communicate with you essentially as an equal, but pay attention to help you understand the message. There are four rules of a language parent. Spouses, by the way, are not very good at this, okay? But the four rules are, first of all, they will work hard to understand what you mean, even when you're way off beat. Secondly, they will never correct your mistakes. Thirdly, they will feed back their understanding of what you're saying so that you can respond appropriately and, and get, the, get that feedback. And then they will use words that you know. So this is true. It's good to have positive reinforcement. It's good to have kind of using the correct language as opposed to correcting somebody's mistakes. But, you know, also different people respond to different things. And I don't necessarily think you need a language parent. It can be good, but it's not a must. It's kind of like speaking from day one. If you want to do it, do it. But if you are an introvert and don't want to bother with this, you don't have to. Again, it's not a rule to me. It's just about personal preference. The sixth thing you have to do is copy the face. You've got to get the muscles working right so you can sound in a way that people will understand you. But ideally, if you can look at a native speaker and just observe how they use their face, let your unconscious mind absorb the rules, then you're going to be able to pick it up. Yeah, this is a great tip when it comes to imitating pronunciation and imitating just how, you know, how the language works, kind of getting into that language skin. Because when, once we get into that skin, we're much better at speaking the language. We just kind of turn on a part of ourselves that is I don't know, it just works. It just works. When you try to kind of copy the face, copy the way a native speaker does it, you kind of learn to to just get the feel for the language and to embody it a bit more so you're able to speak better. It can also help with accents if that's something that you care about uh, because you don't necessarily need to have a native-like accent, but if you want to, then, uh, you know, training by kind of copy the face is a good idea. Final idea here, the final action you need to take is something that I call direct connect. What does this mean? Well, most people learning a second language sort of take the mother tongue words and the target words and go over them again and again in their mind to try and remember them. Really inefficient. What you need to do is realize that everything you know is an image inside your mind, it's feelings. If you talk about fire, you can smell the smoke, you can hear the, the crackling, you can see the flames. So what you do is you go into that imagery and all of that memory and you come out with another pathway. So I call it one same box, different path. So yeah, it's important to have this imagery to kind of connect it with the source itself. I agree. Uh, it's good. It's good to kind of just have this direct connection with the new language and not to use your native language as a bridge. So yeah, I, I understand what he's trying to say with this and I think that it makes a lot of sense. All right, so to summarize real quickly about what I thought of all of this, I think that this talk had a lot of good points, a lot of stuff that, you know, you should study with what's relevant to you. You should use a lot of comprehensible input. Uh, etc. So I thought that like he hit the nail on the head with quite a lot of those. But um, there's a couple of points where I disagree. I don't necessarily think you need to speak from day one. I don't necessarily think you need a language parent. Uh, but overall, a lot of sound advice in this TED talk and I'll link it down below so you can watch the whole thing in its entirety um, if you're interested so that you can uh, get a little bit of a better idea of these concepts. But I do believe that this talk had quite a bit of uh, good stuff in it, although I do not agree 100%. If you like this video and if you want to see more from me and from my channel, please like and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts on the video below. Let me know if you agree with me and feel free to ring the bell for notifications so you know when I post the next one. And until then, I hope that you have an amazing week and I will see you soon. Bye.